WWE Battleground comes to us live Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern on the WWE Network. And consider my interest level lukewarm. But I'll tell you what has my balls on fire is that Otera Central now has merch at Pro Wrestling Tees. So what you want to do, look at the link in the description box, click the link in the description box, and then hashtag buy a shirt. The brother's got child support to pay, that's all I'm saying. Then what you do, if you haven't done so yet, you click that little button that says subscribe and hashtag subscribe or die. Then click the bell, what the hell, so that way you can be updated whenever I give you any content, good, great, or otherwise on this channel. And we're going to do it, damn it, the rest of 2017. We're going to hashtag make wrestling fun again, even if it means that we have to talk about secondary pay-per-views like Battleground. So let's get this out of the way and make the best out of the situation. Holy crap, I couldn't believe my eyes when I went to the company's website. Aiden English, Ty Dillinger actually legitimately have a match on this pay-per-view. I suppose it's got to be the pre-show. But for Joe Cronin and his Ty Dillinger Warriors, they've got to have big, massive internet chubbers right now. And I'm sure a lot of you, if you had to quantify your excitement level for seeing Ty Dillinger on a pay-per-view and had to assess a numerical value to it, you would probably say 10, 10, 10. So while a lot of you circle jerk to this, the Schleg Daddy responds with his own numerical value representing his interest in this pending match Sunday night. Zero, zero, zero. Who's going to win? Ty Dillinger nut huggers. Who's going to lose? The rest of us who don't care about these guys who best days were back at NXT. For some reason, WWE just couldn't help themselves and wait five more days to give you the Uber driver versus Mike Kanellis at freaking Battleground. They just had to blow their wad and give you the first match Tuesday on SmackDown, which again speaks to the whole notion of why would you watch the special events, the pay-per-views, when you just see basically the same crap on TV? And it's a fair, legitimate question. Now, with that said, if you had Mike Kanellis win the first one, he damn sure better win the second one. The other dude, he can sit there and get some extra fares and work some overtime Sunday night at the premium rates, taking people home from the arena in his fucking Toyota Camry. Anyways, on to the tag team title match, New Day and Usos. Uh, I'm surprised we still have tag teams because based off of recent events, it seems like we're breaking all of them up. Uh, with that said, that's until the New Day gets split up. Um, I would rather see these two teams battle rap than actually wrestle. And that's not to crap on the other two teams. It's just, to me, the battle rap was the culmination, the crescendo to this, and everything else is kind of secondary. With that said, who's going to win? Would you put the tag straps on the New Day and keep this team together longer? Will you keep it on the Usos who are doing their best to try and get over his heels? I don't know, frankly, that it really matters because who else are they going to feud with any damn ways? Unless Brizongo is next in line. And you know what? Based off of the pure entertainment and comedic value out of their shit that they're doing each week, I'd be fine with them getting a tag title shot at this point. What the hell? Why not? Probably, especially if they have the New Day win these tag straps, is going to be whoever comes in and faces Brizongo on Sunday, which I would assume is going to be Harper and Rowan at this point. They'll be the next in line to get a tag title shot. But I just want to make sure I called out that what... Tyler Breeze and Fandango have done recently has been really, really good. And when you look at good old Johnny Curtis, Fandango, he's one of those guys, man, whatever he's given, shit or not, he sinks his teeth into it and he makes the most out of it. And I hope at some point in time, the WWE gets behind him again as a singles guy and gives him a little bit of a push because he actually has an ability, unlike a lot of the people on this roster, to embrace what he's given, make the most out of it, and God forbid, perhaps, get himself a little over. On this pay-per-view, outside of the main event, probably the match I'm most intrigued by, just because of I'm wondering how this is going to be pieced together and the finish is going to be booked, is Shinsuke Nakamura, Baron Corbin. You have Shinsuke, who's popular, then you have Baron Corbin, your Money in the Bank winner. Are you really going to have your Money in the Bank winner lose, especially when he's a bigger dude? 
Flip side, are you really going to have Nakamura lose here? Are we going to have some wishy-washy, screwy type of fucking finish? I'm intrigued by the match because of the contrast of styles and looks. And I'm really, really intrigued to see what this company does and how they do the finish. Because to me, that's going to be important. And honestly, again, outside of that Punjabi prison match, this is the match that I'm most curious to see come Sunday night. Shinsuke all the way, Corbin go the fuck away. Shinsuke all the way, Corbin lone wolf of gay. Shinsuke all the way, get that briefcase, yay, yay, yay. Hey, Omega Cuck. The briefcase isn't on the line Sunday, you jackass. I'll get it at SummerSlam, so fuck you. Shinsuke all the way, Shinsuke all the way. This five-way women's number one contenders match is a clear-cut example of trying to get as many people on the show as possible and killing the incentive to do well or get over because you'll just end up getting a gig anyways, so who the fuck's going to care? Also... It's just an example of laziness instead of trying to create one interesting story and build that up towards the pay-per-view. We're just going to throw five people in there and do a bunch of random shit and hope that it sticks. And that's it. And I mean, when you look at this, when you look at the five women in this match, who actually makes sense to win? Me. Me. Fuck you. I'm coming for you, tall and gangly. Where are you? Hello there, my name is Karen, and I am the horse faith bitch of a wife, they just fucking shut it! And I'm gonna tell you this much right now, nobody cares about those five hussies who refuse to cover up their boobies on Smackdown! I should be the true number one contender and become the queen of women's wrestling on Smackdown! Me! Me! And then afterwards, we can all celebrate by eating carrots and all the yes, yes, me, me, vocular. Oh, God. It's bad enough that she's on the Impact Reviews again. I got to get some better locks. That's all I'm saying. But seriously, though, Becky and Charlotte are faces. I mean, you're really going to send them at Naomi? Or you're going to have Carmella cash in between now and SummerSlam, which then maybe Becky or Charlotte makes more sense. It's just, I don't know. Tamina is just a god no. How many more title shots are you going to give Lana? And are we really going to go with Natalia and live some total diva shit here? Like, the way the title picture is currently constructed with Naomi as a champion and Carmella as your uh, money in the bank holder without a significant change, meaning a title change between now and SummerSlam, I look at this five-way elimination match and I say none of them make sense to me right now as number one contender at SummerSlam. Kevin Owens challenging AJ Styles for the United States Championship. This is probably the show where you might have had an th- inkling or a thought that AJ was ultimately going to win the United States Championship here or something would have happened and then that moment may have uh, been pushed off to SummerSlam, but ultimately it didn't happen. You had the title change happen at a house show and a lot of people were surprised and quite a number of people complained about it and I really didn't talk about it a ton other than a couple of tweets, but here's the, the facts. It's the way I see it. Every once in a while, you've got to do one of these title changes on a house show. Same thing with television. Even though we always seem to be knee-jerk to react to them and bitch about them, the fact is, if you never change a title at the house show, you never change a title on TV, then why would you watch those shows? Why would you bother going to those shows? Because you feel like nothing of significance or importance or impactful to the product is going to happen. And it wasn't just any house show. This ultimately was a house show at Madison Square Garden, which is WWE Ground Central. So if you're going to do it, then do it there. Maybe the one thing I would knock the company for is if you were going to do this, then why not stream it on the WWE Network so that way even more people could see the title change. Again, though, with that said, it does teach you a lesson of when they're in town, you never know what can happen. And we need a little bit more of that spontaneity in professional wrestling. And ultimately, let's be honest, it's not either one of the fucking world titles. And let's not pretend that any of these titles in WWE fucking matter anymore anyways. With that said, now that the title change has already happened, and just kind of looking at the dynamics of Owen and Style, Owens and Styles, I probably should care and probably care quite a bit. I don't. I really don't care. 
I'm sure they will do have a decent match, but that doesn't mean that I have to care. But that also doesn't mean that WWE did wrong or was bad for doing the title change at the house show. They weren't. I think, frankly, it was the right decision because of when they did it. It gave them a couple of days of news cycle where people were really buzzing about the WWE on the interwebs. Um, unfortunately, inside, I'm not buzzing very much for this match. I would assume at this point AJ Styles would retain. I just hope whatever they do with AJ Styles, that it doesn't automatically just lead to them rushing into Nakamura and Styles at SummerSlam because even though you can do it now, don't. It's worth the wait for WrestleMania 34. The great thing about Battleground this Sunday, people, is simply this. You get all these great professional wrestlers like Ty Dillinger. 10, 10, 10. Sami Zayn pushed that man. 2018 Royal Rumble winner. Book it. Shinsuke Nakamura. Future Mr. Money in the Bank. Kevin Owens. AJ Styles. In what is sure to be an United States Championship Encounter and all the lovely women of SmackDown and then you can stop watching the show and do what Marcus Smart is going to do and go back and watch G1 Climax because my god that is New Japan at its finest and truly the best motherfucking wrestling in the world. This flag match, maybe Cena beforehand could give us a 9-11 inspired battle rap. Oh baby, chicka chicka, and the towers came a-crumbling down. Unbelievable. Anyways, this flag match between Rusev and Cena. Rusev to me clearly should be a babyface at this point. So of course, we bring him back and we send him right back into the same place, the same shit he was doing three years ago, ironically against the same opponent in freaking Cena. And this match, if you wanted to go the country versus country crap, works so much better if you actually had Rusev representing Russia. Like in the grand scheme of things, why in the fuck are Americans going to give two flying flips about Bulgaria? It is the way it is. But if you had Rusev representing Russia and you're talking about the fake news media here in America and you're talking about Putin and defending the Russians and saying there's nothing to see here, then that is potentially... Something that could get people bought in. Something that could have some interest in injury. And actually mirror what's going on currently in United States society. Instead, U.S. versus Bulgaria? Who gives a shit? And frankly, is the, the result ever in doubt for this match? I don't think so. See, when you believe in the power of God, and you are devout to the teachings of of the books of the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley. Sometimes your prayers get answered. For weeks and weeks I was praying for, hoping for, begging and pleading for, please, please, please give me Randy Orton, Jinder Mahal, Punjabi prison match, main event of Battleground, and oh, a fucking man. God delivered yet again, ugh. And man, I'm geeked for this. To me, this is really a one-match show. I'm just That's the way it is. It's a one-match show. And this is it, baby. This feels like a big deal. This is like my Maharasha moment, if you will. Because I want to see how this shit works. Because we haven't had one of these matches in freaking years. I think almost a decade. And they used to be great Kali's gimmicks. So you can only imagine how well those went over in the past. So this could potentially be really, really good and something unique and different. Or it could be an absolute flipping train wreck of potential awesomeness. This is a big spot, though, for Jinder Mahal. The Maharaja's got a moment here, a real chance to do something to establish himself and be treated as a viable contender so that way he can job to Cena at SummerSlam. Or, even better, even better, we are just potentially one step away, one step away with one more title change Sunday night as the Viper Randy Orton slithers his way over the top of both sections of the Punjabi prison and escapes and is declared the winner, we can still, because ultimately remember hashtag breakfast club rules, bitches, we can still get John Cena versus Randy Orton for the WWE title at SummerSlam 2017. Let's party like it's 2009 again, bitches.
Nay, nay, I will keep this short and sweet, like the viper's construction worker beard. Come Sunday night, Jinder Mahal, your title reign comes to an end. Yay, yay, Cena versus Orton for the belt at SummerSlam. I don't know about you, but that is the Blue Borton's jam. Yay, yay, Breakfast Club still rules bitches. <sighs> Ah, oh, the Blue Borton is ready for Sunday night. And I am too, because come Tuesday night, SmackDown's going to be here in Richmond, Virginia. And a lot of my decision to whether or not I'm going to go to that show Tuesday night is going to be based off of how good Battleground is Sunday night or not. If it gets me pumped up, then hell yeah, I'm going to go this time to SmackDown. I missed them last go around the SmackDown before WrestleMania if this show gives me anything at all, I'm going. But if they're not, I'll just stay at home and watch it and not deal with having to go downtown to the Coliseum and dealing with all the uh, traffic and bullshit and everything else. I can just sit my lazy ass on the couch and watch it and stop watching it ultimately when I choose to. So I hope this show delivers because I really do want to go to SmackDown. But they got to earn it from me, baby. I'm not just going to give it out like Kelly Kelly used to give out hand jobs to married men in the locker room, okay? But you let me know what you expect out of this week's show. And ultimately, again, follow the show on Twitter, like the Facebook page, subscribe or die, click the bell, what the hell, and most importantly of all, hashtag buy a shirt. And remember, OTRS Central, it's not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. I'll see you after Sunday night when I do the review of Battleground. Oh.